left, and there's just this huge, like, gaping hole. So that horrifying mid-flight nightmare was Alaska Airlines Flight 1282, which you've probably seen by now. But there's a lot more coming out now since the news initially broke. Right, it happened on Friday with a Boeing 737 MAX 9. You had 177 people on board is taking off from Portland, Oregon. And about six minutes in, while climbing at roughly 16,000 feet, a door plug near the back of the plane suddenly blows out. Whether it resulted in a rapid and explosive depressurization, or in other words, just like a big damn boom, it didn't result in what movies have taught me that a whole row of people would get sucked out of the plane. But you did have the entire plane rattling, lights flickering, oxygen masks dropping down, and people screaming helplessly, which, hey, if there is a time to scream, it's then. One passenger recalling the first thing I thought was I'm gonna die. Another sharing in a TikTok. We had no idea what was going on. I truly thought it was the engine. I thought an engine had blown out, a wing had gone down. Like that's how loud and like jolting that like second was that I thought we were going to nosedive at any second. For a full 15 to 20 minutes, felt like a lifetime. I thought every second that went on, we were gonna start nosediving like those planes that went down a few years ago. But luckily, the plane doesn't nosedive. Instead, you see things like it rips headrests off their seats. Cell phones get sucked out of the plane. There were witnesses saying that there was a boy near this gaping hole that had his shirt torn off his body. And then it got sucked out while his mom was holding on to him to make sure he didn't follow. The cockpit door also immediately flew open. You know, fun little surprise for the pilots. And apparently, you know, they put on their oxygen masks. They're like, hey, we gotta consult the checklist. It tells us exactly what to do in this moment. And then that checklist flew out the door behind them. You know, you got flying flight attendants trying to shut the door. The checklist is gone, but the captain grabs a quick reference handbook instead. The crew makes an emergency distress call. They request permission to descend low enough for people to breathe without oxygen masks. This is and thankfully, there were no serious injuries. They got back to the airport just 35 minutes after takeoff. So I imagine like in an ideal world, they wish they didn't have to deal with this, but best outcome possible. Though not for Boeing that makes the planes or the airlines that use them. But honestly, this could have been so much worse. Right? Because reportedly, no one was sitting in 26A, 26B, which is where the door plug was. And luckily, the three passengers who reportedly had babies in their laps were far enough away. Also, they're lucky it actually happened when it happened. Right? If they had been at cruising altitude, which they were just minutes away, a number of passengers and crew likely would have unbuckled their seatbelts. And so in the wake of all this, the FAA was like, Boeing, what the fuck? And they ordered them to ground 171 of the 218 MAX 9 planes that are in operation, at least until they can be inspected. Without causing Boeing stock to nosedive, it canceled hundreds of scheduled flights. In fact, on my flight back from New York on Saturday, I ran into one of you beautiful bastards because they were actually scheduled to be on a MAX 9, but then had to get on our plane. You know, naturally, with this situation, you have a lot of people making comparisons right, to other recent disasters with the company's 737 MAX planes, with the most notable being in 2018 and 2019, two MAX 8s crashing on international flights, killing 346 people, which ended up with all MAX 8 and MAX 9 planes to be grounded worldwide for nearly two years. That is, until Boeing made changes to an automated flight control system. And this is just this last December, Boeing was urging airlines to check their 737 MAX jets for loose bolts because a discovery was made of at least two planes with improperly tightened nuts. And just as I was recording this, we're learning that United Airlines has reportedly found loose bolts and parts in at least five MAX 9s while inspecting the plug doors. And so of course, with this, one of the biggest questions is, well, what the hell happens from here? And the current answer is, uh, we actually don't have any fucking clue. As far as what we do know, the MAX 9 question rolled off the assembly line and received its certification just two months ago, performing 145 flights since then. When the door plug blew out, that was actually the plane's third flight that day. Also, regarding the door, it has been found, with a school teacher only known as Bob discovering the door plug in his backyard. Which, honestly, I would pay good money to see what Bob's reaction was. Was it just a simple, straight up, what the fuck? Or was it kind of like the, the blank stare of, did I, did I get high and I don't remember it? There were also two cell phones found there, one in a backyard, the other on the side of the road. And actually, great news for one of the phone owners. The guy who spotted the second one said it was perfectly intact. It was still in airplane mode. It worked. It just had a severed charger. And he immediately knew where it came from because it opened to a page displaying baggage claim information for flight 1282. Also, we've seen some big updates like NTSB chair Jennifer Hammondy revealing some crucial details during a press briefing, saying that the MAX 9's auto depressurization fail light lit up during three previous flights on December 7th, January 3rd, and January 4th, which could either mean that something was wrong with the pressurization or something was just wrong with the light. In these three previous flights, after the light illuminated, uh, they flipped the switch to alt mode, uh, which is normal. There's a backup. It was very benign. Uh, nothing occurred. Very benign. The light illuminated. They flipped it. They reported it. It was tested uh, by maintenance and then reset. As far as whether or not those incidents actually had anything to do with Flight 1282, currently we're getting a shoulder shrug. She said that she doesn't know. But she did disclose that Alaska Airlines imposed what's called an ETOPS restriction on that plane, or before the door plug incident, meaning that it was prevented from flying overseas to Hawaii so that if something went wrong, they'd be able to return to land quickly. And she also added that the airline had ordered an additional maintenance check for the fail light that was not completed before the incident. And so all of that seems to suggest that Alaska Airlines may have known that there was at least some sort of risk of failure. They just kept that MAX 9 flying anyway. But as we wait to see what else comes from this investigation, I got 
got to pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts with this craziness? Like for you, is this a growing concern or do you see these situations as outliers that will figure themselves out? Or really, any of your thoughts. You know, I haven't seen you since uh, before Christmas, so I'd love to hear from you.